Okay guys, I'm going to try to do a bit of a short review today. Uh, it's a game I just finished up playing. I started a while ago and I wanted to just finish it up, get it off my hard drive. Um, and that game is the Payne's Creek Killings. It sort of advertised itself as being a very sort of realistic depiction of a murder investigation, especially a sort of uh, long form murder investigation. Um, in the sense that it takes place way after the murder has occurred, um, you know, months or years. So you're not having to deal with fresh forensic evidence or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's really just um, kind of deductive reasoning, figuring out people's motivations, where they were, could they possibly have done it, what motives would they have. Um, and I gotta say, having finished it now, it was really it kind of blew my mind, you know, for an indie game um, with obviously a bit of a low budget and only a few people working on it, it, it really shows an insane level of polish. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful experience and it's, it's a very different sort of experience. I'd say the best way I could describe it is Silent Hill meets, uh, I was going to say Mist, but it's more involved than that. I'd say Silent Hill meets uh, some of the, the Frogwares uh, Sherlock Holmes games. Um, because you're completely isolated and by yourself the entire time, and you're in this uh, sort of New England, although it really looks European, uh, but it takes place in the U.S., you're in this New England sort of town, and it's completely abandoned. And one of the things that's really nice about it is there are slight supernatural elements to the game and there's a slight horror bent to everything. And there's just this constant... As many people have described when playing Silent Hill 2, uh, in this game, you know, has Silent Hill 2 has this constant sort of feeling of unrelenting tension and atmosphere. This game has a constant sort of feeling of just not something's not quite right about the town you know there's uh, the lighting when you go inside of buildings you know uh, it doesn't just look like an abandoned town it looks like there's something wrong with it you know there's something unsettling about it but there's nothing so there is some tension but you know it's never going to get to the point where there's like tons of jump scares and uh, you know, monsters chasing you or anything like that. It's it's very very subtle, um, and so most of what you're going to be doing is just investigating and solving puzzles, and and so that subtle tension that's there just makes you feel sort of uneasy and on edge most of the time. You do get into sort of a comfort zone while investigating. So the basic backdrop is um, there was a private investigator hired uh, by a an anonymous source to investigate investigate this string of murders that happened in this town. People aren't sure if they were it was some sort of a serial killing. They weren't sure if there was one culprit or many culprits, and uh, just left a lot of people emotionally devastated. So somebody's hired you to figure out okay what happened in this town. Um, ultimately, the events of the of the of the narrative have shaped a situation where the town is largely abandoned. Um, due to the string of murders and the fact that, you know, sort of jobs were leaving the town and, and young people weren't staying and the, the old people were sort of dying off, the town is essentially abandoned. It, not essentially, it's totally abandoned now. And so you park on the outskirts and you're just left to have free uh, reign over this town to just go through it, which is very creepy because you never see that. I mean... Um, modern ghost towns like that are sort of few and far between, you know, outside of Detroit and stuff, um, especially in the U.S., so um, it's a very unsettling thing, and uh, you, there was uh, the wife of the uh, town's ex-mayor was murdered several years ago, and you're sent in to investigate who murdered her, and ideally why, um, but how, who and how they murdered her. Um, and then, of course, you through the course of the game, you figure out that uh, some of these murders may or may not be related, but that there are multiple murders, um, and the circumstances surrounding them are <clears throat> just as mysterious as the initial case that you are sent in to uh, investigate. Um, 
I, as I said before, I love the sort of supernatural tone that the game has. Um, there are going to be some elements of like spirits and um, sort of spooky things happening and stuff like that. I think the the finale of the game is fantastic. It really works well, and if you've been paying attention um, to the game, uh, you'll be able to sort of come out of it uh, no problem. Um, but really with, where the game shines, in my opinion, is that it, it does work very well as an investigative game. There are uh, some sort of adventure game style puzzles, but a lot of these are, are instead of, you know, take the object and use it on everything in the environment, or in a game like Myst where there's just a bunch of knobs and levers and you got to figure out how to get all the shapes to match up. Um, most of the puzzles in this game are just trying to figure out, okay, I need to get through this door, or I need to open this person's apartment, um, or I need to find a key that opens up this room in the house. How am I going to find it? Who would have access to that? And so there's a, a much more logical train of thought going into, okay, how do I get the next item I need to open something up, or where do I even look for it, you know? And so much like real you know, sort of criminal investigations uh, and private investigations, most of what you're going to be doing is reading through newspaper articles to understand um, the perception of what happened, reading per people's personal diaries to get their motives, to, to get a sense of who they are, um, to get a sense of where they were when some of these things occurred. Um, and so you slowly in your mind start building motives for people. And I think one way in which there's a little more cerebral than the um, Sherlock Holmes games by Frogwares is there's no mind pals. You don't put all these things in a literal visual uh, matrix on the screen and it, it all sort of organizes out and then it basically boils down to one of two or three choices um, that you can make based on how much evidence there is. No, you're just a, a, like a real investigator. You're constantly, you know, and, and I found myself sort of relying on objectivity as well, which I which is very true to life. Or that's how it should be when you're doing these kind of investigations. I would get a new piece of information about someone, and I wouldn't start like, oh, well, they clearly did it because, look, you know, they, they, they called this person a bitch, and then a, a week later that person got murdered. So, yeah, you know, like... I was just like, okay, just because you're mad at someone doesn't mean you're going to kill them. Um, I don't have any other concrete evidence that said this person did it. I'm just going to keep this in mind as we go through the rest of the investigation. Um, and another thing that I really liked is sometimes when I'm playing these sort of text-heavy games, I stop giving a shit about the characters. I don't really care. Uh, I do this when I'm reading novels, too. Sometimes I zone out, and I'm just like, okay... Who is this character that's popping up now? Because I feel like they came on five pages ago and I just totally just skimmed over it and I don't even know who they are and I don't care and I'm just going to keep skimming. You know, because nothing is grabbing my attention. But here's the thing, this game is... Your progression is so dependent on you understanding who all the characters are, what their role in the, in the, in the plot is, what their role in that town is, their relationships to each other, their history with each other, um, and it's a, a very character-driven thing, and I felt like, at the end of this game, I felt like I knew these people. I felt like I knew these people, and I knew their whole history. Um, you know, I felt like, even if I didn't know what they looked like, if they started speaking, I could instantly identify them and say, oh, that's Trisha, or oh, that's um, Scott, you know, and... I rarely get that uh, engrossed and immersed in a, a sort of character-driven experience. You know, typically, especially for games, I'm much more gameplay-oriented. But for something like this, it, it almost is a text adventure, but there's enough going on. The, the, the graphics are beautifully done, um, much like a lot of the games I've talked about recently. And from a very technical standpoint, they're not good because um, it's not a AAA studio. So you wouldn't compare this to, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 or anything, obviously. It's not going to have, but but basically uh, what they have put into the game is, you know, they have used more rudimentary assets than a AAA studio, yes. But, um, and some people might be put off by things like film grain in the depth of field. I feel that most of it works to 
uh, great effect in the game to create a good atmosphere. Um, and visually, the game looks very polished overall. And it's just, it, it really sets the tone and the mood of the experience that you're going to have. Do some things look a little janky or funky? Sure. But I mean, the, if you look at the credit, the credits, I would like when the credits started, I was like, oh, I took my headphones off. And I'm like, all right, how long are we? Because I was trying to get 100% of the achievements. I just wanted to start a new game to get the next achievement. And uh, credits rolled, and I was like, all right, how long do I have to sit through these? And they were over in like a couple of frames. You know, <laughs> not that many people worked on this project. So. Um, I think it looks fantastic for for the resources that they had available and um, also I had zero bugs whatsoever that's another thing you gotta say this is a unity game made by a small team those kind of games are usually fraught with bugs and performance issues um, I didn't have either it it ran beautifully I didn't have any bugs um, so I really loved my experience with this game so if you've been looking for a uh, a sort of if you're looking for a, a murder mystery game with a little bit of a sort of horror bent um, you know something that's sort of like creepy and unsettling it, it'll, it'll evoke a little bit like I said of Silent Hill but um, if you're looking for something like that but that's a little more cerebral that you're gonna have to sit down and really think about what you're doing and you're gonna have to be extremely observant you have to search every single cupboard you have to read every single letter that comes across you and you have to internalize it too you can't just be like oh okay here's a package slip you, be, you have to be like okay is this important why would it be important you know you start building um, you know, for example, there was one character who everyone, you know, talked about her in their diaries as if this person was very sort of philanthropic, but um, when you actually look at their finances and stuff like that, you realize that they're, they're kind of a shitty person. So when, you know, things happen in the story later, when they start acting like a shitty person, you're not surprised. Um, and the other thing I like too is that it's, you know, be, be prepared. It is a very daunting experience when you start because you have the free reign of this entire town. Um, and as far as you know, you can go inside every single one of the buildings. You can't, but you don't know which buildings you can go in and you can't. You don't know which ones are going to be relevant or not. So it's an incredibly daunting experience. And it's, you know, it's people sort of get that satisfaction of, of playing games like Dark Souls when you, when you, you know, you're starting something very difficult, and you're like, God, how am I going to do this? And then you finally get over that hump, and now you're kind of master of your domain. You're going to have a sort of adventure game equivalent to that playing this game, where it's just going to be like, I don't even know where to go next. I don't know what to do next. I have no clue. This is I, I can go in a million different directions. But once you start putting the pieces together... The puzzle pieces together and the puzzle starts to take shape then you know it all comes into focus and then you've got like clear direction you're like okay I need to do this next I need to do that next it's also a game where you're gonna have to constantly take notes and it's also a game that encourages things like just guessing um, you know uh, I busted through a number of locks just by okay I've been given a bunch of birth dates this guy is always talking about how much he loves his daughter um, it's his daughter's birthday. Why don't I try and get into the to the to the the key coded uh, door? Why don't I try and get through there with his daughter's birthday? You know, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But the beauty is that the game, you know, it's okay to try these things. You know, rather than having to wait till you read a diary entry and it's like, oh, the code to my thing is the code to my door is you know A B C D. You know, you, you don't have to wait. You can just go for it. There's actually a bigger puzzle towards the end of the game that requires you to find these little bits, but you're given it... I feel like the puzzle was structured so that they're like, hey, guys, you do realize we've given you enough... We've given you enough information. You can brute force this combination now on your own. You don't have to find the last clue. You could if you wanted the exact combination, but you can pretty much brute force it now. And, and it's not going to take a ton of time. You know, because you have five out of the six digits or whatever you need, you know. Or I think it's like four out of the six, but you're like, yeah, but... So another thing I really like is that the puzzles are a little bit next level. Um, 
I don't want to ruin any of them, but basically some sometimes it'll be as simple it it will seem as simple as like it'll be like, oh, uh just um uh oh like oh there's a chessboard. Make sure that you put the the pieces of the chessboard in this you know, order, right? So you'll take a picture of the chessboard in the in the one area and you're like, okay, I'll just go here and put them in that order, right? Not really. You got to start thinking a little bit more outside the box. So it's it's kind of next level puzzles. It's not just like, oh, find something that matches and then go with it. You have to be like, okay, well, why would why would the guy in his own room who's setting a combination based on his chess pieces, why would he be basing it off a chessboard on the other side of town? He wouldn't, all right? So if you're going to try and rearrange the pieces to open the, the combination with with those chess pieces, it's not going to work. By the way, I'm being uh, purposefully vague here about this is not an actual puzzle in the game. I'm being vague about a puzzle, so I'm not ruining it for you. But basically, the idea is, no, you need to think just a little bit, you know, next level about some of these, um, you know, how to get around some of these issues. Uh, it can be a little frustrating at times when you have to find a million keys. I'm not going to say it's a perfect game. Um, every single door, like there, like there's not like you go into a house at one point, and there should just be a master key for the whole house, really. But you have to find a new key for each individual door. It also is a little bit bullshit sometimes. They do send you back and forth between, you know, disparate edges of the map a million times, and that can get annoying. I played this game in about two or about three big chunks. Um, so it wasn't too bad, but if you're trying to do it in one sitting, you're going to be fucking pissed because there is a lot of time wasting like, oh, you need this combination. Well, here it is, but now you have to go all the way over to the other side of the map to get the, to open the safe, to get the key out. And then you have to come all the way back to this side of the map to use the key to unlock the chest. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. And, um... I think for some players it could be sort of off-putting because you also have to keep in mind like a ton of different stuff at one time. I, this is very much the kind of game I would recommend having a notebook out and start taking detailed notes. Take detailed notes on the different... Um, I started taking notes on, on the, the suspects, you know? And I was just like, he did this, he did this, he did this, and blah, 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 and, you know, then he's, he was mad about this, he was in love with this person, you know... Um, you can even read their psych reports. Uh, when you you can even break into the medical records in the hospital and look up what kind of medication they're using. And of course, they don't spell out what the medication does and why they're taking it. So if you're not that well versed on pharmaceuticals, you may actually have to go to your computer and look up. Okay, what is uh, what does this do? You know. Uh, what's paracetamol? Oh, that's just Tylenol. Okay. Uh, well, what's, um, what's this? Oh, well, that's actually Xanax. Okay, so maybe that, and then you can look for their psych evaluation and all sorts of stuff. And by the way, you're not required to read any of this stuff. And many of the puzzles can be completed. The sort of, um, typical adventure gamey type puzzles can be completed without doing any of these things. So, like I said, you almost like system shock too yeah you can get by on you can rest on your laurels or you can fly by the seat of your pants in this game up into a point but you may come to a point where it's just like right how much do you actually know about this character and you're gonna be like or this suspect and you're gonna be like oh shit, i wasn't really paying attention i was just trying to get the door open to get in here and it's like yeah well you need to know all the other things about them to really start drawing conclusions you know um and uh, there's different percentages of completion too. You can f you can leave the game like you can end the game at any time. Any time you want, you can just say, "Okay, I want to see what's going on," and you can end the game. But the game's not really gonna tell you unless you collected all the evidence. I will say this: um, the game doesn't spell it out for you uh, who the killer is and what you know all of that kind of stuff except up until the very very end but like i said if you're paying attention your list of suspects is going to be narrowed down to like one or two people towards the end and you're probably going to be pretty sure who who is the the main suspect anyways 
You know what I mean? You're not going to be like, well, it could be this one or this one. No, you're going to be like, nope, nope, nope. I know who it is. You know, so, but that's only if you're paying attention. I mean, the game will spell it out for you at the end if you've collected all the evidence. Um, but, you know, if, you, if you're playing this game for the right reasons, I feel like you should definitely have a pretty good idea before you even finish the game who who done it you know so um it's an it's an interactive who done it but it it's it's very detailed in the amount of information that you're expected to to internalize and put together and it's it's really sort of a fun investigative uh mystery um but like i said it's it's also telling some very sort of human and emotional stories, so there's you know, some emotional highs and lows in, in the in the game as well, you know. If, uh, some of it might sort of get to you. Um, and then, of course, there's a creep factor, too. I mean, I was very unnerved playing the game. I wasn't, like, scared. I was just unnerved. I was like, okay, I'm just generally uncomfortable in most of these environments. You know, they did a really good job of lighting them in such a way that even if you turn all the lights in the building on, it's kind of like Kubrick's The Shining. You know, a fully illuminated hotel can be just as creepy as, like, a dark, you know, mansion when you get that feeling of isolation and loneliness. And also that there's there's something else there that could be evil, could be not evil, something sort of watching you, something sort of supernatural. You catch glimpses of it, but not really. Um, and that kind of starts fucking with your mind. Um, one of the beautiful things that this game does is just the lighting in and of itself will make you think like, wait, did I see something? And you probably didn't because there's very few scripted bits in the game where, where stuff happens. But um, it's just such a unnerving sort of, it's not altogether creepy, but it just, like I said, you know, being alone, completely alone and isolated in this abandoned town left to your own devices is sort of creepy uh or not creepy but it's it's just unnerving and it's uncomfortable the whole time um so yeah it's it's more than just like your typical like just whatever puzzle game there's there's just an element of like okay because like at least in the mist series it's not always unnerving sometimes there's the sort of magic and wonder of discovering like new stuff and like oh this is cool i'm in this weird floating island world where you know crystals respond to singing or whatever um uh you know this game is very much rooted and grounded in reality and yeah it's 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 you know, kind of just ratcheting up tension just a little bit and making things just sort of a little bit uncomfortable all the time um, in the game. And the soundtrack does a very good job of that. If there's one criticism I would have of the soundtrack, it's that it's, uh, it's extremely repetitive. There's not that many tracks, and it is sort of a longer game. I mean, it's going to be... Uh, what did my playthrough clock in at? Let me just see. So, yeah, about 10 hours total. So, um, and that's the other thing I really like, you know, you buy some of these indie games, sometimes these walking simulators or adventure games, like I just finished The Shore today as well, and The Shore, as great as it was, I really loved it, it was only three hours, and that's, again, 100% completion, all achievements, I did also 100% this game, um, just cause I, honestly, it's hard not to, you're gonna want to be scouring for as much evidence as possible, so if you finish the game and you don't have pretty much all the, the newspapers and all the journal entries and all the, the, the letters and stuff like that, you're not gonna have a clear idea of what's going on, so it's not hard to 100% it, but I 100%ed it, but it was about 10 hours, um, and I've played this over three different play sessions, so, you know, and it cost about the same when it was on sale, so you get much more bang for your buck, the only thing I would say is, is it doesn't have a ton of replay value since you already know everything that's going to happen. Um, but uh, uh, this is also a great game if you have like a, a friend or maybe your your spouse or, or you know partner or whatever um, is really into like mystery stuff. Then you can solve this mystery together um, because there's other than just controlling the character and stuff there's very little sort of gamey elements to it again like i said it is almost a text adventure with just the reading and um but there you know it is visual too you have to be very observant and find keys and things like that but uh, 
So yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, Payne's Creek Killings. Uh, the footage I'm going to be putting in probably just a, a mashup of different trailers and stuff. I'm sorry, guys. I did. I was actually planning on doing either a Let's Play or something else with this game, um, but I honestly didn't know how long it was going to take me. And also the drive that I recorded probably 80% of the footage on uh, just completely died. I'm going to try and do data recovery myself on it because I can't afford to do it through a service and uh, quite frankly the data on there is just recorded like you know video game footage and stuff like that for YouTube none of it is essential you know everything that's essential has been backed up a million times in other places so um, so yeah since I don't have any footage um, and I, I didn't know if I was gonna like this game that much at the beginning when I started it like I said it was so daunting I was like well I don't know you know so I didn't want to commit to you know, recording a ton of footage and then deciding whether or not I want to do commentary or a let's play over it or whatever. So I'll just be splicing in whatever footage here. Um, but uh, I would recommend you guys check it out. Uh, it's not on sale right now, but it should be going on sale soon. And once again, just to support, much like with my let's play of The Shore that I just uploaded today, please just support these indie developers that are making really good stuff like this. I think you guys will like this game. And another reason I wanted to do the review is um, I wasn't going to do anything for it, but I finished it. I wanted to see what other people thought of it on YouTube. Basically, nobody's done a review, and I had a lot that I wanted to say about it, and I really wanted to say it's a fantastic game and after finishing it I was like wow that was an awesome experience I hope other people can check it out yeah I hope you guys check it out and let me know what you think about the game in the comments because I'd like to have a discussion with whoever else um, about this game and I think the developers would appreciate it too there uh, like I said there's not a ton of content on YouTube right now sort of reviewing the game it's mostly just let's plays so yeah anyways thanks for uh, checking me out today.